Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a new episode of Cork in the North with myself, Andrew Ryan. Still got my watch. Oh, Jesus. Um, got me got a new phone as well. Oh, well, let's hear all about Things how you got a deal on that then. <laughs> let's see. I actually did get a deal on Of that. course you did. There's nothing you don't get a deal on. You go to shop for bread and milk and you're like, listen, can we work on this? Can we figure out something with this bread and milk? It's not that bad. Uh, thanks everybody for coming on to another episode of the Cork and our podcast. Tickets are down to the last few for your show, your second show in Laveries. Am I right, Aaron? Guys, I there's nothing more I can do here. I've, I've given you the warning maybe, signs. Maybe write a fucking show. The sh show's been wrote for four years because <laughs> it's been the same material for four years. But yeah, last 40 some tickets, they're going to be gone. It's still two months away, so it's going to be gone. IronButlerTickets.com. Thank you to everyone that has bought one so far. I love you all. Uh, looking forward to it. I'll be there on the night as well. Oh, yes. A double, you get to see Andrew too. I'll be get hosting the show. Bought. I'll be hosting the show. And I'm just going to do a tight hour before oh, he comes Oh, yes, please do. Just to piss him off. Because I'm not, I'm only doing 10. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if halfway through the game you just went, fuck it. I'm done. I've, I've had enough here. No, no. Thanks to everyone. Listen, we need to keep the lights on here on this podcast. <laughs> we are currently, we've done the accounts. We need a sponsor. Oh, boy. And I'm just basically saying to anyone out there who listens to the podcast, are you a business, a local business that needs mm -hmm. a sponsor? If you want to be advertised on this podcast, please get in touch. We advertised the company kind of not by accident recently, but let me just say that they contacted us because the amount of people that actually inquired. So inquired to them about their products. I, so I love how you're being so vague and ambiguous with it. But, but we all know. He, do, he doesn't want to set me off, and I understand that he's right to, to be vague and ambiguous. So if yeah. you, we need to keep the lights on here, and also please sign up to the Patreon three pound extra for extra episodes. We're going to be announcing the live podcast next day pretty soon. If you're a member of the Patreon, you get first dibs on the on the tickets, and also you get a massive discount on the tickets as well, and you're able to sit in the front or second row on the day that's the perk <laughs> but also you get to pound an extra episode so please sign up to the patreon seriously come on seriously come on like the lights need to be sean turn the lights off here pretend we've run out of money yeah yeah, yeah. go sean let's see what it like looks we're like. running out of money right like oh, look we're running no, out of money no can't even keep the lights we on we can't do it anymore. so please donate My face give looks us so dark. give us money Give us time. Uh, there, that's time. what happens when you give us money. See, this, how, see how beautiful see I how, how, See how better things are with money. See? But things are better with money. And if you don't have money, what do you have? N n nothing. Sean, you're supposed to fucking turn it off. Turn the lights so. off, Sean. There we there go. There you go. It looks awful, isn't it? Uh, now back on again. Uh, money! Uh, and no money. No uh, money. So listen, look. if you're looking for sponsorship, get on. We've got, we can send you all the <laughs> analytics and everything about who listens. We've people listening, li listening to this podcast as far as... As Quebec, Quebec. I, I just made that up. Uh, we'll just pretend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, like. I didn't make it up. Quebec. People uh, are listening in Australia. People Buscanistan. are listening in Canada, Afghanistan, Ballad Iraq, Iraq. Iraq. Yep. Um, where else are they Port listening? Down. Russia. Yeah. Algeria. Yep. Algeria. We're popular in Finland. Leak slip, <laughs> which is down south. And also, if you've got a local business, yep. just think of the coverage you're going to get in Australia. because oh. they'll never buy anything. Oh, do you want to sell tampons in Uzbekistan? Hey, this is the podcast hey, this, to do. Hey, we, we will plug hey, anything, Shlanta. including books. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be back with you, Aaron. Not seeing you for a bit. Yeah, going to open with the podcast. Yeah. Your mom is in my DMs. Well, that's great. That's great. That's, she messaged me. Tell you, your what's mom great is about messaged this. me. Tell what's great about this. I'm delighted about that. <laughs> oh, great stuff, mom. Now I have to go to your house tonight and have a word with you. That's great. <laughs> Can't wait to do that later. She sent me a message saying... What'd she uh, say? Go she, ahead. She just said, uh, I was away recently and I put a post up saying I was going... I went to Poland. Yeah. And she just said, I hope you have a good time. You know, it's like Aaron's mum kind of thing. And I, yeah. I, and I just, well, no, her Instagram handle isn't Aaron's mum. <laughs> Let's get that in. The <laughs> but I know it's Aaron's mum. Like, you just you know, know it's my mum through association. Yes, yes exactly. Okay. So yeah, it was yeah. very nice of her to do that. I think She's she a lovely her. woman. She is a lovely woman. Yeah. Lovely woman. Yeah. Yep. Lovely yep. woman. So Great I just... Stuff. Just people just want the listeners to know what's happening there. No good. Yeah. <laughs> sure, just start sending dick pics. Fuck it. The, the, why not? Why so, not? Aaron, since yeah. the last time I've seen you, yeah. you're not going to believe what happened to me. Oh, I'm going to believe it. I went to Poland. I went to Auschwitz and I got food poisoning. <laughs> I got food poisoning. That must have been a in gas. Auschwitz. Hey, oh, thanks. Gas chambers. Sean's playing football again. Love it. Yeah. Uh, the, uh... <laughs> I, got, I got food poisoning in Auschwitz. Well, you shouldn't have had an Auschwitz. Oh my God! It, Have you ever been to Auschwitz? No. It no. is. Listen, all, all 
Lighthearted. Oh my god! I mean, I'm what sure a, that tours out. What a day! What a day! What um, a place! I I will horrendous. S- yeah, horrendous. Oh, just mm. like a very interesting day. Yes, very sad day. Mm. And but but just absolutely mind blowing that you're you're actually on like probably the worst place in the world. <laughs> Your hair is crazy today. What's wrong with my hair? <laughs> You've got- both this sides are going out like this. You I'm look, trying to talk about Outswitch you, and you're looking at me going, Air yeah, Gel's not right. Yeah, it's not, you look like a dinosaur that's been turned into a human. <laughs> My hair's all over the shop. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. You need to, we need to figure this out after we talk about after this podcast. Um, it's all right from the side, but when I see you straight on, I go, there's something. Am I looking weird? A slightly, just slightly. Producer Sean? That's a Sean's a nice guy. Sean will not. Sean will, yeah. Sean won't say anything. Sean's I'm, getting married. Sean doesn't I'm, know how to criticize. I'm, getting married. I'm your true friend because I'll tell you when it's yeah. not sitting right. How do I look now? Better. It is better now. Okay. I well, think it's nice it, to it, know that we're getting the priorities right on the it, podcast. It was. It was just. It's too flat at the front and yeah. too up here. Yeah. It needs to be more up here. What more up? Yes. All right. I think yeah. your mum likes that as well. No, she no, no, no. I'm helping you. <laughs> this is why this is why my mum isn't in your DMs as much because <laughs> I'm trying to get you to like. I want you to be my dad by the end of this. That's the goal. Um, so, thank so you. you, go thank to you thank, switch. I went to Outswitch. I went to Paul. I went to Krakow. Mm. And um, have you ever been to Krakow? Uh, no. Oh my god, what a place! Is it Krakow or Krakow? Krakow. My mum says Krakow. You'll never get a long banner blocker well, on Instagram DMs. The Polish people in. Krakow say Krakow yeah, but and I'm, the English and Irish say Krakow but Mrs Butler from West Belfast says Krakow so okay we'll, we'll, will you say Krakow I'll say Krakow we'll balance it yeah, cross yeah. community yeah love it cross okay. community okay so now, t- sorry just for me to get the geography right here Krakow yeah. off is in Poland, Poland. It's a two oh, and a half switch hour is in it's an hour west of Krakow still in Poland yeah still still okay. in Poland Yeah. so yeah. I went to I'd switch in Birkenau okay. which is two concentration camps because uh, what was one not enough? <laughs> Were you like, I love these, so it's like Disney World. Give oh me the another one. So we went anyway, mm. and um, you know, eight, 10 o'clock bus, got there for 11, and then got back to the hotel at like 6 p.m. A long day, mm. and also really interesting day, but also very tiring in terms of you're so focused on the, the tour guide, and the stuff they're telling you is mm-hmm. so you're like, what? Yeah. And, I mean, I knew, obviously, a lot about the history and what had happened there from documentaries and stuff. Mm-hmm. But to actually be there, it was it's a bit eerie. Mm. And it's horrendous. And the tour really does, um, you know, when it was finished, I, there was a little part of me that just went, oh, it's over now. But you know the way there was a bit like, you know the way you do some tours. Like, oh, Andrew, it was over 1945. You know, but like, you know, I wanted to get out of there. But also I was a bit like going... Mm. Oh man, like you, you, you just didn't really know what to think. Oh yeah, because it's just so, so horrific. Oh yeah, those experiences are kind of yeah, yeah, it's it's frightening. But I imagine. But I got food poisoning there, and then I was like, what? when you say there, do you mean in the concentration oh, yes. camp or I, in the in Poland? Just in Poland. You were but just I, but I, I, I have a feeling they were out to get me. Like, who are they? Who are they? The spirits. The spirits of what? The, of spirits, Anne Frank. Man. The spirits. The, Anne the, Frank is Amsterdam. Look, you don't know your your World War history at all, do you? Listen, I'm just saying things. You know, I don't Frank, know anything. You know Anne Frank? She hid in a house. Hid in the house. It was all quiet. And it was all quiet. And then Shut eventually up. they she got the they, 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 they caught her and they took her to a concentration camp. That's right. Which is, honest to God, I I just I was just I was just like I was walking around and going, no, they, what? Mm. And you'd see things and you just mm. go and they explain things to you, the mm. evilness of it. Yeah. And you know. It was just, and like, the, you know, the classic comedian in you. Uh, you're like, I was, you wouldn't believe it. No, no, I was walking around. It, like, honest to God, like, I was walking around going, <laughs> this is just horrendous. And it was very somber, you know, and everyone's very somber. And mm. the, the mix of people in the tour as well were I very interesting. I couldn't be on that tour. We were really interesting. Like, a lot of young people, young mm. girls, and like... Um, <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> there's a lot of young girls on the tour, like... And then there was people fucking... People doing fucking selfies, like... Oh yeah, that, which I found probably very... people making TikToks and the doing dances in the showers. Bam, bam, bam. I think it was just so disrespectful. Oh yeah, I thought it was horrendous. There was people doing selfies and out switch yeah. and taking pictures, and I said, "Look, I understand you might want to take a picture, but like, you know, none of this are like." Mm. 
You know, like I just found it very, very, very disrespectful, and I just ignored it. And I didn't obviously not going to say anything, but uh, I was just, I just there was a big group of Jewish people that turned up obviously to pay their respects, mm-hmm. and they were, how would you say, um, in full. Jewish clothing, old, old school, traditional. Old, yeah, the wee curls and all. Yeah, um, what's the name? Yamakas. Yeah, and yeah what's shit. the? There's, um, a, there's a name. For oh, them, Hes- it, Hesedic. Hesedic. Hesedic Jews. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they um, stood near a certain area where there was a gas chamber and the screaming, like what they started screaming, the screaming the prayers, the tears. Oh God, they're obviously they're obviously you know to pay their respects to their to their people. Yeah, and people kicking selfies with them. <laughs> Do you know, it's hey, terrible, man. That. And you just walk around and you're just like, oh, fucking hell. Like, this Hi. is just... But you know what? We went home that night anyway and uh, it was a bit like, what are we going to do tonight? Should we go for a pint or what? Like, what do you do? Like, I'm on a, I'm on a holiday, but I'd always wanted to see it. Mm. And I think it's very important to see it as well, you know? Mm. And, and the tour guide was phenomenal. He said, he said, this is the worst place in the world. This is the worst place on earth. What, what another human can do to another human. I don't know, the Dole this office is, is pretty... <laughs> it's pretty bad over there, like... You know, but, like... Uh, the Royal Hospital waiting area isn't too great. Yeah. But you um, can see stuff. Like, you're sitting there and you're just, like, going, oh, Jesus. Mm. And then uh, you get back on the bus and the bus is just so quiet. Oh, Going yeah. Going back, like, it's just really quiet. I'd highly recommend it. Krakow is a phenomenal city. Full of fucking stags. Cheap, I heard. It's cheap. Mate, I paid one fifty a pint. That's if you your, drink that's the, your If you place. drink the local stuff. That's your place. If you're drinking Guinness and that, mm. you know, you're going to pay maybe four quid a pint. My mum used to go every year because it's just so cheap. Does she like it? Oh, she loves it. Yeah, yeah, Her and her sisters used to go. Just oh, it's a trip. phenomenal spot. Yeah. We were flying from Dublin, uh, fl- fl- flying with Ryanair, delayed, right? That makes me sad. Two and a half hour delay. Sad. And we're getting to nearly three hours because the minute it goes over three hours, you, you get your get, 200, 250 right. quid. So we got on the plane at two hours 45. Oh. And everyone on the plane's like going, we just need 15 more minutes and we're going to get to 250 each. So we got to 255 and they shut the doors. And we're, uh, there's a guy on the road next to me and he was like, can we can we do something? Like, Can we delay it? Like, <laughs> if we go up... <laughs> Like we were to walk, we were all what an we, Irish mentality. We're, we're all sitting there going like, if we, and can s- we delay our own plane <laughs> to get for to the you. sake of everyone getting two hundred euro each? So we, year. we're sat on the flight. There's about five minutes to go. I'm sitting there. I'm talking to the guy next to me. He's like five minutes away from two hundred and fifty quid delay. And we're all sitting there going, what can we do to delay the plane? Like an extra five minutes. So by the time the the, the plane pushed back from the gate to the time it was in the air. We were delayed by three hours and three minutes. Mm. Now, I don't know. Does the delay compensation kick in from the minute you're in the air or when you push back from the gate? I think it's from when you're sitting on the plane and they close the doors. No, because you could be delayed on the tarmac. I think Um, it's in the air. No, I don't think it's in the air. If it was in the air, you would have too many. They're bound to have it. Look, Ryan R aren't fucking stupid. Ryan R -R will have made sure that you have with a minute to spare, have not received your 200 euro. They would find some way to dispute it if it was yeah. so close. It'd be different if it was maybe like three hours and 20 minutes. You know, Well, I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll fight them. You, you sure, <laughs> tell you what. You I'll get, fight them for me five, my money. You you get on it and then come back to us and see. Well, I'm going to tell you, you something actually, lads, oh, right, while we're sitting there here. It goes. I recently took a Vanti train service in England to the British Rail Ombudsman mm-hmm. and won. What the fuck is a Vanti train? What, what? The train service, they're, they're, they do, have, you know, oh, Virgin yeah. Trains in England. Avanti. They yeah. lost the contract and it's now Avanti. Okay. West, West Coast Mainline. Okay. So Manchester, London, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, up the West Coast of England. And you won a case because... So I'll give you an example. I'll give, tell you what happened. I'm in Glasgow. I have a train booked from Glasgow to London at 12 o'clock. I turn up at half 11. The train at 12 o'clock is cancelled. Train at half twelve is cancelled. Train at one o'clock is cancelled. Mm. I decide I need to get to London. So do you know what I did? I went and I booked the flight because I needed to get to London. The flight cost me two hundred and three pounds with EasyJet from Glasgow Airport. I went out to Glasgow Airport. I got the flight. My train ticket was seventy five quid. They refunded my seventy five quid, but I wanted them to pay for me flight. Yes. So I put in a claim for me expenses, and they Avanti came back and said we're not giving you the expenses. Tough luck because another train left. At bloody quarter to three. So you're telling me you have to wait three hours for another train to go that it might go. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I took him to the ombudsman. It's great. An independent body in the UK. Took him and guess what? The ombudsman got in touch with him. Came back. Avanti. Yeah, we'll pay you your, your flight fare. Congratulations. So Ryanair, you want to take me on? 
Great. I will fight to the day I die for that two minute delay, two, three minute delay to get my 250 quid. Fight for it, Andrew. Fight. We're in your corner. I here. think of a great way of making money is find whichever Ryanair flights are delayed the Consistently. most. Consistently. Buy those flights. <laughs> so if it's Bratislava That's to gambling. Porto, yeah. buy the flight every week and hope. Buy it for a tenner, yeah. and if one of them gets delayed by over three hours, you're up. It's yeah. like gambling. Yeah, it's very gambling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look, uh, you you try it and come back to us with the results. See how you get all. I think it would cause more stress in your life because you would constantly be looking at your phone, being like, "Oh fuck, this is on time. I'm fucking about to lose a tenner here," and that would be every week. The stress. You what, would do you know what you could it. do is you could theoretically. Mm-hmm. Get an airport, say Belfast City Airport. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying to do this, but every flight that day, book a ticket for it and then ring in a bomb hoax. Oh, yes. So then every is... flight is delayed over three hours. Yes. So yes. you then get a compensation for every. You can make like four or five grand a day. Yeah. I'm sure you'll get away with that. So or easily. fly a drone. Fly a drone fly over. Fly a drone over. Yeah. I'm yeah, just yeah. thinking about during a cost of living crisis, yeah. how can we as people yeah. manipulate the system? Yes. Make a bit of money. Because we need to keep the fucking lights on. Exactly. We need people to have money for the Patreon. And if this. Three is, pound a month. If this, if we need to bomb scar the airport, if we need to fly drones all over, over the place. Belfast International see a drone to think oh my god at least somebody's visiting us so you can see a bonus episode with me and Andrew and Dave Elliott that is what Chat, we need absolute shit that's what if, we need if, if there's something Belfast good at it it's bomb scars like yeah I haven't had any bomb scars in a long I haven't been near any bomb scars in a long time do you miss time. I I can't even really remember you just said much. sometimes hey, do you John it got you out of a lot of shit what do you mean it got you out of a lot of shit because like you you would like Get out of school or get out of work or whatever. See, I didn't get the school ones. Our school never had any rang in, unfortunately. I think I just got the tail end of the bomb scares getting rung in. Um, How do you do a bomb scare? Do you just ring up and go, does the bomb already give them a code? Is it like a particular system? Like No, I think it's just straight up. There's a bomb outside. There is it's a code as fiesta. well, though. There is a code, though, isn't There's there? something you can say that, like... I love how they've got rules and regulations. They're like, yeah. I listen, yeah, they're bombers, but you have to stay within the terms and conditions of bombing. But I think yeah. the code is when you phone the police <coughs> to tell them you have a bomb scare. So you, like, phone the police and be, like, red 4999. And then they're like, oh, Jesus, fucking... And then they get in there. So they know it's a legitimate bomb scare. Uh, so you're not, like, in a shop in public going, there's a bomb in here. And the fucking people get wind of it and start going, ah. I think that was the whole yeah. thing. Um, but look, I again, I know very little about bomb scares. I just want to put that out there. Yeah, I need it away. And I, and I don't think you should be doing that kind of stuff. Yes, if there is one at the airport in any time in the next two, three weeks, it, it wasn't us. It wasn't us. Fuck's sake. We have nothing to do with it. And just, if you notice that I have booked a lot of flights on one particular day, <laughs> and then just by coincidence, I yes. get 250, yeah. 200 quid, 250 <laughs> euro. Um, so I went to Krakow, stayed yes. in an amazing hotel Great. called the Marriott. Lo- yeah, so yeah. cheap. I know of. 250 quid for four nights. Great. And was it was luxury. Bargain. So cheap, man. Was there a spa in it? Spa, hotel. Never went to the spa. Yeah. You love the spa, don't you? I'll, I'd go every day. Just, Would you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Not when I'm here. Like, but but if what I'm does on, a spa do for you? Relax. You know. Get you away from your phone. Put your phone in a locker. Put it away for an hour. Go sit in a nice bath of warm water with some strangers. <laughs> You know, go into a sauna, get your cock out if you're in Switzerland. That's what I did, you know. And then fucking... That sounds like an absolute nightmare for me. You know, you not appreciate luxury? <laughs> no, but it's a different type of luxury, Aaron. I mean, my, so. my, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all about comfort, like. I, uh, when <coughs> you're in a spa, how would you not be comfortable? Yeah, I just don't think it's, um, I don't think it's right, that. <laughs> it's not right. I don't think it's right. I recently, I recently, okay. I joined, rejoined a gym that has a spa. Okay. And I've been going in, and it's been I'm getting the ick in from, the gym or the spa, the sauna and stuff. Have you been in the sauna? Yeah, in the steam room. And Is it just a bunch of sweaty men talking? Yeah, shit? and it's just like oh, I remember. Just hate all that shit. Like Andy Town Leisure Centre before it got remodeled. There had its. I don't know if it has a sauna now, but it had one. And basically, all the other lads in West Belfast would go sit in it. So I was in the gym one day, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'll go in the sauna here for a bit." In the sauna, literally, it's. It can only hold eight people. There's eight people in it. I'm one of them, and the other seven are just these old men talking absolute shit. And then they eventually stop like talking shit. It just the conversation dies out and it's silence. And then <laughs> there's like a wee bit of silence, and one just goes, "Do you miss a drink, Daki?" And I fucking near died laughing because clearly Daki has an alcohol problem. And Daki just went, "Oh." <laughs> And then they proceeded to tell me how they chip cable boxes still to this day. And that was a 45-minute conversation. It was 
it was one of the best days of my life. So, <clears throat> is that is is this the the gym in uh, Andy, Town Andy Town? Town. Center, so, yeah. what was the membership there? How oh, much did it cost you? I can't even remember. It was that long ago. I can't, yeah. It was like four. <coughs> it was pre COVID. It was 2019 or something like that. Um, it probably. What's the, what's the optimum right time to stay in a sauna? I say 30 minutes. What? I only do about five to ten. I do 30. It's very hot though. But you, it's a mindset thing. Oh, here we fucking go. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, you keynote speaker. You can, Andrew, you can it about four in the morning. Uh, it's a toe. It's literally just battling with your inner demons. Um, no, well, they do. They have. Uh, there's an infrared sauna place on the Lisbon Road called Heal and Heat. I've been there before, and it's literally just book out an hour for a private sauna of your own, so you can just sit in it. No one else is about. What does like, a sauna actually do for you? I, I just like how it feels. Look, there's all sorts of fucking. Similar to our friends down in Nuri, it's holistic where you, you know, it, it's hard to, to, to calculate what actual benefit there is. I will say, I just like that it, it gives you that little bit of a sweat and sort of just feels nice. Um, but gives your body a bit of love and a bit of heat. Yeah, they say like, oh, it's good for, you know, relaxing your muscles and, you know, any aches and pains and blah, blah, blah. But they say cold therapy is good for that too. So I really don't know. I just like it. But I wouldn't do it that often. And what's the steam room benefit? Steam, I have no idea. There's bound to be ones, but exfoliating, like yeah, your skin, your skin feels all nice and smooth after. Is it like where it opens all your pores? It does. Gets out all your dirt and stuff. It does a wee bit of that. Yeah, it's a bit of an exfoliant. Um, So half an hour in a sauna. How long in the steam room? Oh well, if I was doing half an hour sauna, I don't think I'd do half an hour in a steam room. Like I would do. I would do um, like a split, maybe 20, 20, 20 minutes in the sauna, 20 minutes So the next time I go to my gym now, which is going to be tonight, I'm going to do 20 minutes in the sauna. Just challenge yourself and just say, like even when the 10 minute mark, when you think, fuck, it's getting warm. Just now make sure you're well hydrated, which you are because you're drinking a good bit there. With I'm your... drinking a lot at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi. Lent, no fizzy drinks for me. Um, no fizzy drinks? Lent, I've had no fizzy drinks, no crisps, no chocolates, no pizza. Your skin looks amazing. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. I, fe- I look, but I'm also, this is, I'm, I'm in fight camp at the moment. Oh, yeah. This is this is me getting ready for my show, right? I'm doing all that. I'm teeth whitening. I'm using Rogaine in my hair. I'm fucking I'm moisturizing everywhere. Oh, yeah. I'm using deep wrinkle cream at night. Oh, fucking, I am just in prep mode. I'm running every day. I have did 5K every day. Are you serious? Yeah. What is going on with you, Aaron? Are you in love? No. Do you have uh, a yeah, woman? Yeah, with myself. <laughs> Do you have a lady? With myself? Do you have a lady? No, my lady. What's your relationship status? My lady is the stage, Andrew. And <laughs> I have <laughs> bullshit. And I am getting in prime condition for the filming of my recording next month. Okay, you're also time. recording my show. I am recording, yes. I'm going to be the video production. He's going to be recording my show at the... Uh, at the black box. The black, which is sold out, ladies and gentlemen. Gone. Thank you so much to everybody that's bought a ticket. Gone. Um, are you, are you, I, I feel there's a new, there's a new Aaron here. Are you, what's, what, is there a, have you, has something happened? Have you been dating? Are nope. you seeing someone? Nope. Are you on sw- internet swiping? Nope. nope. It's literally just because I want to be the best I can be for my show next month. That is literally it. I, I swear to God. So for that one hour, you want the people who see you a lot to know that they're looking at a guy that's in the best shape. For You're looking at the... Pr- also, I'm fucking... You may have seen I in the summertime here. I'm playing football more as well. If there's anyone doing any five-a-side games, give me a shout because I want in. Um, I'm playing more football at the minute too. Why? Because... Uh, I'm playing in the Northern Ireland comedians team against the Man United Legends in June. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. You should get on that. I wasn't invited. I'll get William to invite you if you want to play. Like what Man United legends are there? Oh, I don't know. Fucking probably some third substitute from nineteen ninety three. So I'd, who's organising? I'd put like as I don't think we're getting Kent on that. Uh, but uh, I think William Thompson. Give him a shout because we'll probably need more players. Um, and we'll because we'll do rolling subs and shit. I'm sure. Like I must text William. Actually, I'd love to play in that. The Man United legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. text William. Now, I mean, where's I'd, it on? He might already have it all full, but. There's no harm in texting them. Like, uh, it's on in a stadium out in fucking East Belfast. Can't remember the solitude. I think it's called. Um, yeah, I'm literally going to text him now. You you cannot contain yourself for even the end of this podcast. Should I ring him? 
Should I ring him on the podcast? I mean, maybe, but and then... See, and see, will he have a space? See what his excuse is. R- ring him and go, William, you're on the podcast right now. Now, the likelihood is he's still in bed. But right. let's We're going to ring go. William Thompson give it live go. on the podcast. I get the, get the phone right up to the blue light just so they can hear, the, the, the listeners can hear. Here but, we go. We're going to ring him live on the podcast, William Thompson, all right. to see if I can play in the Northern Ireland Comedians. <laughs> Here we go. Cannot, cannot continue. Here we go. So. Can you hear that? I can. Yeah, oh, put it this side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit tricky, but you'll get it. There's no way he's out of bed. There's no way. He has to be out of bed. Hey, he'll be out of bed in another four hours. Welcome to the Tesco oh, Mobile Voicemail Chat. There you go. There you go. He's there. not there. Get, send him a wee message. Tell him, <laughs> William, oh, ring me ASAP. Important gig. Six grand. Just say that, and he'll. He'll get right back to you. But yes, basically, I am among many other comedians. He might, right, he might ring during the podcast. Sure, we you, will you, it. you keep it on standby there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, I'm also getting in shape for that because I want to I want to go out there and show those United Legends. Stay retired, right? Stay, <laughs> get back in your fucking car home. I'm going to make it a miserable day for you, right? I am going to be running. I'm going to be running. And is there like a piss up afterwards and stuff? Oh, there probably will be. Like, I mean, I don't drink. How, how, how many people actually come and watch the matches? I don't. There's tickets on sale and stuff. Like, so the, it could be the full round for all I know. Like, um, yeah, there's the tickets are like 12, 15. And was this on last year as well? No, no, no. It's just this year. Last year, we played a team for the crack. We played a team in Lurgan just for a bit of banter, and we got absolutely fucking <laughs> hammered. We got beat like 10 1. They, we, we, they played, uh, I played with them for the the one against. Oh. The, the, here he so. is. Here oh, he is. Right, right. William is, is calling. William is calling. William. Oh, God. How are you doing, man? Listen, you are officially live on the podcast. Thank you. Hello. Hi, William. What's happening? Man? Yeah, listen, you're uh, you're currently live on the podcast. All right, I am literally about to board a plane. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, I want to know: is there any space in the Northern Ireland comedians for me to play against the Man United legends? Um. Yeah. Could you put me down? Yeah, no worries. Johnny Bo needed replaced anyway, so yeah. Oh, brilliant! What so, about that? I, if there's any space, man, I'll definitely do it. Yeah. What about that? No worries, yeah, hundred percent. All right, man, enjoy your flight. Stay safe. No worries, see you later, man. Bye, bye. bye. What's gr- what's great is you don't even know the date. <laughs> what date is it? <laughs> I don't even know if I'm available. It's the twenty fourth of June, and you've just committed to it. Oh no! Hilarious. Oh no! You might put that on your new phone. Monday uh, the twenty fourth. No, uh, hold on. Twenty fourth of June. I don't think it's a Monday. It's a Saturday. Saturday. Are you away that weekend? I'm away, but I'll fix it. I'll cancel it. <laughs> just to play in this game yeah I'll cancel it good lad uh, I, I'm excited to see them I can't wait to play along the wings with you <laughs> I'm a right back that's what they call me safety in numbers yeah. where's he flying to William now he's probably doing a gig somewhere or fucking probably, going to, probably going to Amsterdam to put something up his butt or something I don't know <laughs> the, uh, that's what he likes to do the, uh, the, so tell me uh, this. so who else plays so I imagine Shane's playing Shane will play Sean Hegarty Sean will play Kieran Bartlett's playing I mean Guess what position he'll be in? The, cool. the yes, uh, the uh, ah, you net haven't got a chance at him in nets. You know what I mean? Um, the uh, so yeah, lots. And then who? God knows who, who else, else is playing. I have no idea. William knows. Well, William knows more than I do. Um, I just know I'm playing, and the Belfast live. And it's rolling up, rolling. Subs. Well, we'll have to have subs. Like, oh, yeah, there's no. What, how long is a half an hour side? No, forty-five. Oh, fuck full no. game. That's why. That's why I'm every day. I'm hustling. Jeez, I have to get back into running now for that. Well, we, let's who t- anyone that's playing any five aside games in Belfast and give us me, a show. Give me an Andrew if you want. We're in, the court I'm now representing enough. Northern Ireland. I've, yeah. I've changed. Ali- I don't yeah. know if, I, if I'm allowed to you, play. You have to wear the kit, no? Is it the Northern Ireland yeah, kit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, no. you have to. Oh, do I have to wear the Northern Ireland yeah. soccer kit? Yeah, wait, I had to wear it. I have, a, I have a photo of 2011. The Northern Ireland comedians played the Southern comedians. We fucking whipped them. Oh, my God. It was, was it good fun? Oh, yeah. It was great fun. So it was. And we did like a gig afterwards and whatever and a bit of drinks and things like that. But, yeah, uh, you will have to don the Northern Ireland kit. Okay. I will wear the Northern Ireland kit in June when I'm playing against the Man United Legends. I will. Mm-hmm. I will step over my traditional past and I will become one of ye. Mm-hmm. I'll just start running around 
after the United players just going, never! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never! Just paint a wee tricolour to your just face. Paint a tricolour to my yeah, face. Oh, what I'll have like North Irish and then I need to have the Irish jersey. I, whenever you score a goal, what you want? <laughs> they, they say, oh, you're right back. Okay, if you scored a goal at right back, I'd be impressed. Uh, but yeah, you just left it up and it has the opal. <laughs> and that's the hopeful and then, he, and then, and then just put a balaclava on as well and start running around hey, Paddy will be wearing one anyway Paddy playing Paddy's playing it? I'd imagine he is I think he played in the last one and I'd say he, he would be well up for it like um, so yeah people can go see that in June well it's 24th. nice to force myself onto the team hey I at least I had the the confidence to to, to, to to invite to say, me. Yes, yes. I you wouldn't. Know. I wouldn't do you like that. I've got your back. Well, see, nice maybe he's us. like, oh, well, I'm, well, Andrew's not from Northern Ireland, so maybe. But then you gig here enough, and you live here, so I think, yeah, I understand. I think, I think it's acceptable. We have taken you into the Northern Ireland fold. You're you're a member. Don't, okay. don't say I'm a member. You're a member. No, because people will say, like, is he a member? Oh, right. Like, sorry. Don't want to, the word member gotcha. and being in Northern Ireland is very great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the leader, mate. The leader. <laughs> um, this is my fucking yeah, town. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, my yeah. town. So, I, so, but look, I'm just in a real good place at the minute, taking care of my sleep, taking care of everything's all Are good. you I'm monitoring your sleep on a sleep app? Mm. No, but I don't need to. I could if I wanted. Like, I have the, the Fitbit watch that has the sleep app, but I know I'm getting good enough sleep. Knowing you just wake up and you know. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm doing all right. Well, yeah, I was when I was in Krakow. When we were in Krakow, I um... we haven't talked about the food poisoning yet. Oh, I'd like to know more. Now, here's what I'll say: when you go away to trips, because I sort of do, just because I have had that experience before, where no matter where I am, even if it's in like America or somewhere that's like very upmarket or whatever, I'm very conscious of local food because your stomach is not used to whatever the yeah. water, the cook, blah blah blah. So I'll only ever I'll I always order very very safely when i'm abroad what tell me how you got yourself into this mess pizza <laughs> right right okay i don't actually so we so we, was a pizza i don't exactly know i don't exactly I, I i don't exactly know exactly which bit but all i remember was i just remember the following day when i was eating there and it happened the following day. Like I wasn't walking around out, so it's getting sick. Right? Mm. Cause it was, you know, because it kicks in after, like. Mm. The colonic pizza. I remember coming back, because we flew back early Tuesday. Yeah. And I was doing the Empire last that last Tuesday night. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember being in bed, and I swear to God, man, I couldn't get warm. Oh, I had the really? heat on. I had about five blankets oh, on me. Boy. I had a tracksuit on me. Oh, boy. I'm in bed, and I couldn't get hot, and I started to shake. Ew. And then you know when the sweats come, uh, and next thing you know I'm in the toilet and I'm vomiting, and I mean serious. I'm like, I was like, what the hell is this? Mm. So anyway, I go back to bed. Yeah, sleep for a couple of hours. I text Jade who runs the Empire, and I'm like, Jade, I don't know if I can get in here tonight because I'm, and she's like, let me know. Anyway, I sleep for a bit and I wake up and I feel totally great. Oh, well, that's so felt thing. great. Yeah, yeah. Went in, did the gig. Had a few lem sips, had a few neurofen, just took whatever I could take just to yeah. give me a G up. Yep. Had a coffee, did the gig, wasn't 100% at the gig, went straight back to bed, went back to bed that night. Oh my God, it was worse. Oh God. It was like my body just let me go to work. Oh. And then all the energy that I spent at work. Yeah. The body was drained again. Worse, yeah, even worse. Oh. So I had an awful night's sleep. And then the following morning, I had to fly over to Birmingham where I did a gig with William and Mickey. Oh, and you know what I love about William and Mickey is this, right? This is the best thing about <laughs> William and Mickey. And this shows you where I am in the friendship circle <laughs> yeah. of the Northern Ireland comedians, <laughs> right? Go ahead. We all turn up in Birmingham to this really great gig. About 300, 400 people at this gig. It's an Irish night special. Cool, cool. So they book William Thompson, Mickey Bartlett and me, right? And after the gig, we all get an Uber and William says, oh, I'll get to you because we're all staying in the same area, but we're staying in three different hotels. Okay. So I go in anyway and we're getting the Uber. And then Mickey's in one hotel, William's in another hotel, and I'm in another hotel. So we get to William's hotel and then William and Mickey get out. And I'm thinking, well, where are you staying, Mickey? And Mickey just goes, oh, no, me and William are just going to have a pint. I wasn't invited for the pint. <laughs> I wasn't invited for the pint. <laughs> nah, hold no, on. I didn't go. I wouldn't have gone anyway. 
Yeah. Because I wasn't feeling great. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that they already looked at me and just like, well, Andrew isn't the kind of guy to go for the pint. I'm, I'm, look, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not that guy that's going to no. stay up all night and have pints with you. No, no. No respect. No disrespect. And no. I think they probably knew, like, this isn't for Andrew. Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would have. I think they had already reached. Oh, don't get me wrong. We had a great, we were at the gig mm-hmm. and they're drinking pints and shots and whiskey. Oh, and I'm on a cup of tea. Ah, well, then they knew. So they were like, well, there's no point in inviting Andrew. Like, ah. He's not, he's not that I didn't want to go. And you're not going to start drinking at the hotel. I'm not going to start drinking at 11 o'clock. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't yeah. drink all week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. All week I was in Birmingham. <laughs> oh my good jeez, have you been to Birmingham? Oh yeah, I was there recently. It's a tough city to get round. Do you think? I think it's a tough city. Mm, I don't it's, know. It's awkward. Well, I didn't really walk about it, like to be yeah, fair. Yeah, it's mad. So, it. so my life is very different at the moment now, Aaron. I've got mm-hmm. a gardener for the back garden. I have uh, I have You've a, got a garden? Yeah, I went, to, I went to Krakow. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't spend that much money had a great time we had a blast over there mm-hmm. drinking pints mm-hmm. uh, did touristy stuff if I see one more horse and fucking carriage there's too many horse and carriages there is that right and also there's a lot of fucking Irish lads there man and they fucking shit face like oh just on stags, stags like, and stuff I, we saw a guy at half eleven in the morning mm. the cut of him like mm. but, but I, I remember one time I was just like going the state of him now, fair play to him. He's on his holidays. I've, I've aye, no, I've aye, no aye, issue with that. Aye. But the cut, I was like, what's up? What's happening for you for the rest of the day? I remember Blackpool's mad for stag dudes. I don't know if it still is. It's Blackpool. Uh, not, it right, pre- I'm saying it now. It's the worst place in the world. <laughs> I've been, I've been to Auschwitz. Like pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, I am telling you now. Never again. Have you gigged in Blackpool? Yeah, never again. Really? I am not that. I am not. For them, wow! The whole thing. People go, oh, Blackpool. You know the northwest of England. It's the lights, the promenade, and all I got. Pleasure it's Beach. It's fucking shit. I seen Joe Pasquale in Blackpool there with, you my, go. with my granny when I was there. There you go, mate. <laughs> was he good? He was fine, but he was Joe Pasquale. He's doing all the fucking stupid voices. And shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I remember we, my granny used to bring us. We were young. It was like me, my granny, and my aunt. She would bring us all and. Because of the stag do's would happen the night before, we went out for a walk to get breakfast in the morning and just tied the alarm post. Was a guy on a stag do, tied the alarm post, no, no trousers, no boxers, just deck out, just and he's steaming, just like trying, just hoping someone will untie him. And my granny was just like, look away, look away. It's just like, serious, man. Oh, but like full fucking dick out, like we soft fucking. I just remember being ten going. This, this place is nuts. It is absolutely wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't see what the attraction is. I've been there a couple of times. I don't get it. The beach isn't a beach. Part of me wants to go now because you're. It's, I'm curious I about would it. like... Do you know what? We should do a documentary, Andrew and Aaron's tour of to the Black. towns we hate <laughs> to see if we can fall in love with them again. Blackpool. Auschwitz. Lurgan. <laughs> Lurgan, <laughs> yeah. Lur- Lurgan. <laughs> Ballymena. Why the flags? So many flags. There's no need for the flags. <laughs> it's very Seinfeld there. Why is there so many flags, people? It was a very uh, sign is it? When you say it like that, the flags right. go up near me soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They go up on the 1st of May, is it? Or 1st ah, of June? I see, that's why. I is it the 1st of June they go up? Or 1st of May? It's soon enough. Soon enough. They. What's the, why are they putting up all those flags? The British flags? Because that's what they do. Fucking claim their land. I don't, I don't know. Great thing is where I live, there's none of that. I live in an area where it's flag free, where hopes are alive, dreams are high, ambition is key. You're living in the past. And your dad is gone. And my dad is gone. <laughs> well, Terrible not yet. Not yet. Can, I ask, you, can I ask you, why, why, what is it with the flags? Uh, well, here's the thing. I personally... Why is it, what is, are they only, do the council only allow them to do them for like 90 days? There must be some sort of regulation behind it. But look, they, they definitely have it up longer than that. Like, it's also to keep them in good nick too. You don't want them mm. up in the winter and all. And- Ah, I right enough to get blowy and all rainy and all. Yeah, oh, so God, rainy. that's terrible. Yeah, you have to replace it? them. You know what I mean? So, where I live now, there'll be a couple of British flags going off. Mm. What would happen if I put up a couple of Irish flags? Oh, burn your house down. I wouldn't do it. I'm not a fucking idiot. I know, but that's what would happen. Yeah. No, I'll put them up. No, I'll put them up in the poles. No, the flags don't go up in my estate where I live. Right. They're not allowed to have flags. Where do they go? They go on the road. On the oh, road. When you come out of the estate, they're on the road. Yes. You would definitely get the ladder kicked from underneath you. Would yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, but I just I, I'm not causing any. I know you're not. I know you're. I know I'm you're just, just, just. I'm just like why, you're, you're why, just what's, what's the need for it? Like, and you would deserve it. 
<laughs> because you would deserve it. He deserves it now. Um, I the, just don't uh, know. I, like, I see this is so alien to me. Like this is normal for you guys, but it's just like, why would you need to put up a lot of flags? Like, here's the thing: there's no I, flags down in Cork. Like, I like. get it too because I go like, if you're really that, um, I'm being quite. I know I'm being quite silly and stupid here. I get look. People basically go, it's part of my identity. It's part of my culture. It's part of my blah blah blah. I think if you're so insecure about your culture and your identity putting up a flag is just showing that insecurity more than anything. Um, like, I'm fucking... I, I don't need to fly a flag to know that I'm Irish. I, I don't need to put a tricolor outside my house. I don't give a fuck. There's no one that does it in my... You know what I mean? Hey, buddy, fucking... Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's people more... Uh, do you know what? I just hate flags in people's houses in general. I think it's the most tackiest, ugliest, fucking trampiest thing ever. Like, fucking, the worst one is fucking... And look, <laughs> I have a neighbor that puts up a fucking... And he's probably listened to this shout out to him um but he puts up a, a gaelic flag outside his house every time tyrone are playing gaelic or something like that and i just look and go red and white yeah i just look and go why why do you need why does the whole street need to see your love for fucking you know tyrone. What I, mean? I don't put up a fucking flag at dirty dancing or something like that or fucking grace or whatever you know what i mean like fucking because like, that's what i would yeah. do <laughs> just patrick swayze's face flying out my house like i just i, I know it's all about oh i'm showing support and all do it internally do it on your own fucking the, the, the worst one as well is the republican hipsters too that won't just put out a tricolor oh, yeah, yeah. they'll put out a starry plow <laughs> or like a rising sun yeah or a shake of ours face shake of ours face or a d company flag or yeah. free palestine is it that, what? Palestine's a big one too Palestine's but a big one, that's yeah. a more of a year round one yeah my favourite thing that happens I know I'm talking shit about flags and stuff but see when the World Cup happens in England or in the World Cup the Rock Bar I think it's either the Rock Bar or the Glen Owen it's one it of them sounds. oh it I sounds. know what's coming on here now they will put up the flag of whoever's playing <laughs> against England <laughs> I get a fucking Food out of it. You'll be driving buzz bars like Spain flags outside Ecuador the belt. Flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one. Yeah, <laughs> and the shit house really like the the best one as well. Back at I think it's maybe the 2012 World Cup. I was in uni, and uh, I think it was England had qualified, Ireland hadn't, and but the closest team that had like Ireland's colours were Mexico. So in Queen's Union, they had formed like the Mexico support team and every fucking student, the student union was just full of people in Mexican tops fucking supporting fucking Mexico. <laughs> it was fucking There class. was a video went round when England lost to France in the Euro, in the Euro, at the World Cup, was it? In the quarterfinal and in, of a pub in Belfast and then when they missed the penalty or whatever, oh, or whatever happened. Oh, yes. Like, yes. <laughs> Genuinely. I, that was the, one. the hatred, There's but then so these much. people will happily get on a flight, go over to Manchester and watch Man United play. Yeah, exactly. I know that is that There's is so the, much I used to say it when I was younger. I was like, if we support Ireland, why do we support Man United too? Like, I, I, I always said this to my parents, my dad, and stuff. Like, um, like I couldn't care less if England do well soccer wise. Yeah. All I care about is that Ireland have beaten England in the Six Nations in rugby <laughs> and we're going to win the Rugby World Cup. And you fucking heard it here yeah. first. Yeah. See, see, um, on the day of, was it the Euros final? Yeah, the Euros final, and uh, and England were in it. Um, I was playing up in a bar in West Belfast, and it, the match was on the TV, but there was no sound on. But I think England scored after about five six minutes, and see the atmosphere in the bar when the goal went in. England went on to lose the match, but when that first <coughs> goal went in, you would have thought. They were watching the plane hit the second tower. <laughs> did, did, it wasn't the first tower, it was no, the second tower. Yeah, it did, was just complete dejection. Did you have to adjust your set list to like yeah. Matt? Did you have to start playing sound of silence and stuff by Simon and Garfield? Yeah, but we're coming to, back. Yeah. Just playing the soundtrack for Schindler's List. Just making yeah, the sound. There, there was no happy songs. The shit house is unbelievable, isn't it? Like until it leaked <coughs> back into the game. And then you start playing fucking Wonderwall. <laughs> the, when the, I was a kid <coughs> excuse me, when I was a kid we used to ring Buck. Buckingham Palace from Cork. You used know? to ring Buckingham Palace? Yeah. Like prank call the Queen? Go, How's the Queen? <coughs> Queen in? And they just hang up on you like, and you ring back and you'd be like, uh, you used to ring, just doing all that kind of stuff. Listen, before we finish up this podcast, we have a couple of questions. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, from listeners. Uh, we've also got people looking for relationship advice. I sent you that one earlier. Oh, we will go through that. Now here like. is one question. This is a guy, this is Dean. Oh, Dean is one of the regulars. Shout out to you, Dean. Dean, pa he, Dean's you. a patron. Dean pays for this. See, Dean phones in the bomb skirt of the airport so he can afford oh, his Patreon. Patreon. 
Dean said, did you enjoy living in London, Andrew? Yes, I did. I was there for the weekend. I couldn't deal with the amount of people every day, trains, tubes, etc. I like it here. In I like it, I imagine, the north. Always feel dirty being on them tubes all day. Oh, <laughs> you should always be feel dirty when you see me who I'm on at the weekends. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, London, I love. I'm a big city kind of guy. I love the busyness of the tubes and the trains. Um, I like it. I think it's great. Mm. It's for me. Yes, you feel a bit dirty, but that's why we have showers. That's true. That, that is. is true. I, I also think uh, if you're from a small town or a small area, a countryside, it is a big change. But I, from from just outside of Cork City, went to school in the city, so I'm used to cities. Went to England when I was 22. So being in the city is very normal. And yes, I do like London. I do live London. And I'll be honest with you, I do live London. I do love London. I would move back there tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, 100%. For some reason, I thought you wouldn't. I was very settled here. Mm. But if someone says to me, Andrew, you need to leave Belfast tomorrow, where do you want to go? I'll go London. Right. Oh, yeah, I totally go. But so expensive. Ah, yeah, but like, you get a lot for it. Do you? Yeah, you get a lot of options. But then it takes so long to do everything, too. Yeah, I, 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 I lived there for years. I only did Buckingham Palace once, but it was by lucky I went past it in a taxi. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. when you live in an area, you don't really go to the no. tours. I've never been to the People Cork, have said to me, like, oh, Andrew, we're going down to Cork, we're going to Cove, we want to go to Spike Island. I'm like, I've never even been on it. Yeah. I've never been on that. It's Same a very way. famous. I've never been on it. Oh, that. yeah. What's the Crawford Gallery like in Cork? I don't know. I've never been on it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same when people ask me about the Causeway. I'm like, I couldn't tell you. Not I couldn't tell you. Titanic Museum. But I could tell you a really good. Uh, bar like off outside the city that's near the golf yeah, course. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah, I mean, yeah. like we're not, when you're from a place. So, fair. so yes, Dean, I do love London. I know it's not for you, but listen, you know. But when you're there, you make an effort. You go for it. Another question on the pod. On this one is, oh, when is Michelle O'Neill coming on the on the podcast? Ah, I listen, listen. Struggle. We're, 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 it's a struggle. She. The rumor is is that she's been told face to face about it, not to come near us. <laughs> And I think I don't think the rest, the reaction was as positive as we'd hoped, but we're working on it. Listen. Now, Aaron, I sent you a question. Do you want to do this question? This gentleman's we got asked relationship advice. Now, I'm not going to say his name. Don't say his name. Just because we're keeping it anonymous. But basically, I'll I'll read out the full excerpt and then you can all come to your own conclusions here. So here we go. Hey man, love the podcast as well as the stand up. I've got a question for you lads on the pod. I've recently split from a girl I was in a relationship with for two years. Tough. Each of us have a seven year old from previous relationships. And there's two seven year olds. There's two seven year olds from previously, and she keeps coming back trying to play family again. And as I still want that back, all the bullshit that comes back with it is kicking my ass and messing with my head. How the hell are you and Arn so good on your own, being happy? telling everyone to feck off and just being comfortable being alone. I need to learn that because I can't keep hurting myself going back and forth. Thanks, man. Use this on the pod if you feel like it. Get rid. Get rid of them. Get rid of the ex. Get rid of the lot. Get rid of the kids the whole lot. <laughs> the kids, yes. Put Move. the kids up for adoption. You Move. get a one-way flight right. to Epstein's Island and you don't <laughs> return. You just live your life the rest of the day. I don't, I don't understand how to... I couldn't know what, know what to do with that. Here, here's the thing, he's in a tricky situation here because if the two seven-year-old kids have been friends for the last two years and oh, want to remain friends, then I sort of, I feel like you kind of have to, you have to you have to be an adult here. You have to put your bullshit aside, you have to put your own emotions aside, and you yeah. have to put your kid at the forefront. And if your kid gets happiness and joy of spending time with this other kid, then I think you and the adult, two of you being adults who got yourself in the situation should be able to put it aside and go right let's do this for the better of their mental health but you have to happiness. stay in a relationship with that woman no. or just let the kids see each other no let the kids see each other right. meet up for play dates fucking take them to the park you know fucking and then look obviously if they're going to be there too just have a coffee here and have a civil chat it's what you have to do I know that it maybe hurts your head thinking back on the memories thinking back things have gone wrong now there's also a case to be made if the other person, I don't know the scenario, but if the other person is emotionally abusing you, if they're being any sort of flipping, you know, if if they're they're doing things or saying things to try get into your head, then you got to reevaluate that for your own mental health and, and whatever. But I think um, just try do your bit. It's there's never an easier, clear answer on this. You have to. It goes by case by case, and you know, the bigger question is how do you find happiness being. Being alone, Andrew, being by yourself. I think that's what he's asking is the main thing. Well, I wouldn't say I'm alone at the moment. Okay. Well, you can dive into that as much or as little no, as you want No, that'll be for another time. Fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm, but but I'm, in times where you were alone. Well, keep yourself busy. Keep if yourself you busy. If you're not with somebody and you're like, oh, I don't really... First of all, can I just say, Aaron, that was really good advice. 
Thank you. There was a little part of you there that I actually went, oh my God. It's I in could, you. It's in you. I'm Let in it out, I'm Aaron. <laughs> Adulthood is in you. I am well aware that I am very mature when I want to be. But life's the point. What is the point? What Life's a laugh. <laughs> Here's the thing. There's, uh, yeah. How do you be happy on your own? This is what I would say to you is this. I've, I've always lived on, I've lived on my own for nearly seven years. I've obviously got friends and I'm keeping myself busy and all that. Do a bit of dating here and there, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, have hobbies. Hobbies are good. Have hobbies. hobbies so good. my hobbies are golf. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously working a lot, traveling a lot. So it's very hard. I'm always kind you of... You love moving. your job. Is I, another great I, one. I love my job and I love my hobbies. Yeah. I found two things that I love. Yeah. And I focus on them. Mm-hmm. Family, friends. And also you've got to understand is that people's relationships are not what you think they are. What you see on Instagram and Facebook is is... Bullshit like That's a lot true. of the time. That's true. There are a lot of people out there who are very unhappy. Mm-hmm. And now listen, I don't know why you're unhappy, but it is very difficult to leave a situation and it's very difficult to leave a relationship if you've got kids, money, housing, issues, security, Absolutely. all that kind of stuff. But I will just say this to you. From somebody who has got to this point in my life without any kids, never been married, never been in a relationship that I didn't want to be in. If I've ever been unhappy, I've get the fuck out of it. I've been dumped. I've been cheated on. You know, like I've, you know, I ain't perfect. You know what I mean? Like I've done things in relationships like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Nothing extremely bad that would damage my, I would, that I wouldn't lose sleep over it. And that mm-hmm. it wouldn't damage my moral compass or anything. But, mm-hmm. you know, just being a bit of an arse or being a bit lazy or staying out too late or not following through on something and blah, blah, blah. Is there is a way out. And life is sometimes is better knowing you have peace of mind rather than worrying about somebody coming in a door that you don't get on with when they come in from work. Mm. It's difficult to speak to people, but being on your own is okay. It's Absolutely. more expensive. Absolutely. Like it's so expensive to yeah. be on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is because society is not, you know, programmed, programmed for a own. person that doesn't want to have married and kids because you want to get a mortgage on a single income and pay 100% of the gas bill. Yeah. Like it's difficult for people. Yeah. So every situation is difficult, but being on your own is okay. If you're in a shit situation and you're not happy, my advice is go and speak to people. Figure out what you can do, when you can do it, get advice, open it up to people, get other people's opinion. You will not realise how good people are when you open up. Mm-hmm. When you tell people, you've, you're, I'm, you know, I'm in this relationship with this girl or this guy, and I'm unhappy, speak to someone and they'll go, oh, you're unhappy. Okay, why? Oh, I don't like the way he or she speaks to me or whatever. Um, we're not getting on, we're clashing on this, and he or she is not doing this and that. Okay, you will not realise how good people are. And if you're unhappy, find a way. Mm. Find a way. You will find a way. Believe in it. Visualize it. Yeah, I also think you need to you need to reach a point in your life for your own mental health where you can stand on your own two feet, solidly say, I am happy being myself, being on my own, because you can't be dependent on other people for your happiness. You gotta find it in you. Because, you know, if not, then you're you're never you're always gonna be wanting to lean or have to have to be like I remember in, there was people I met in uni who were just in and out of relationships because they were like, oh, I got I gotta be with someone. If I'm not with someone, I'm not happy. Which is not a great way to live. You gotta find yeah. that with yourself. And I was like that for a while. Yeah, pe- people do get like and people shake it off. I think the point you make about finding hobbies, finding interests, doing things on your own, making some you know, taking some risks, being a bit brave, doing things that maybe you think make you uncomfortable, being like, you know, for example, some people don't like to go to the cinema on their own because it makes them uncomfortable. If it makes you uncomfortable, try it. Do it. Give it a shot. You know, I do a lot of stuff on my own. Do it. And then you might find, hey, you know, this actually isn't that difficult. This is fine. I enjoy it. I like my own company. And when you can be happy with yourself and who you are, you'll finally be open to a relationship where someone can be happy with you and who you are yeah. as well. And that'll be a beautiful thing. And I'll tell you something. There is no braver person in the world Than that me. can sit in a restaurant and eat a meal on their own. Oh, I'd love that. That is a that that is that to me. If you can do that, and I do that a lot, I do that nearly yeah. every week. Yeah, that's a good point. And it's not that I'm brave, or anything. it's just that I know I'm comfortable. I'm fine with who I am. I understand. Yeah. I've got my flaws, but I'm fine. I'm an okay guy. I'm yeah. just an average bloke. Yeah, you know what I mean. That does a bit of comedy and tries to get yeah. on, right? There's people out there that are worrying too much about stuff that yes. people don't give a fuck what you're doing, man. People, see when people you're don't out, give a fuck. People are too concerned about their own thing. People don't care. People are on their phone. People are talking to they whoever they are. They don't care what you look fucking, like. They could give They've no, true balances. Couldn't care less about your fucking clothes, your dress sense, yep. or yep. your job, or yep. this. People need to realise. Reel it in. Relax. Reel it in. Life is fuck. Just Life's do too your own, short. Do your own thing. About. Do your own thing. Um, 
I think we'll wrap up the questions there. That was good. Good advice for our good friend there. Good advice for our friend there. Uh-huh. Anyway, listen, ladies and gentlemen, Cork and the podcast. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure. We'll see you again. See Slon you again. Go see Aaron. Go see Aaron. Oh, and Andrew, if he's about anywhere. Yeah. So Bye. Slon. Slon. Patreon. Three pounds. Three pounds.